for Progressive Communications, um, and we have member uh, organizations in, in Latin America, and also um, another affiliation I have also follows quite closely, um, Human Rights Defenders in <coughs> Mexico. So I'm aware um, of some very interesting dynamics between um, independent media, social media, um, and civil society, um, sort of combating the effects of the drug war and things that you've all mentioned. Um, you know, but pl please correct me if I'm not uh, getting it all right, um, but I'm just wondering if you can comment on, um, you know, what's being done either by states or other civil society organizations to protect media um, and individuals in civil society that are facing a lot of danger um, for speaking out to their communities in a very direct way using the internet. Um, and then also, you know, what, um, what more can be done to sort of secure, in a way, our online communications for this kind of freedom of expression and access to information uh, to help mitigate all the problems that we've talked about. Thank you. Any, anyone else at this point? Okay, we'll come to the panel. Anna, Anna, do you want to pick us off with the question about Princess Guatemala? Yeah, in relation to the issue of the femicide, um, I think that um, there is a lot of theories <coughs> I'm sorry, I, I don't know what is the, the better or not. What we have in the stories that we um, read and that we have in, in our case is that there are different components. One is the, the general violence against the women and the matching uh, culture that our states, um, or our case in, in Guatemala, um, that we have. But um, there are some uh, relations that at some point are doing with the issue of some women related with, into the youth gangs. And that there are some of them that um, because they are inside, at some point they are killed. This is one of the things that are, are used, that I, they are inside of, of, of that groups. We had a study about the role of the women into the youth gangs, and it was the typical reproduction of the same role that are in the society um, with the discrimination against the women, but also um, in, in, um, in a context in which it's, um, it's, it's more aggressive, the situation of the violence from the guys that are inside um, against the, the women. But this does means that, um, in general, the problematic uh, related with women is something that is more, um, is bigger. Because you also have in the country one of the most um, problematic, um, uh, if you see the rates of the intrafamiliar uh, violence, you can find a very, very exaggerated numbers. Uh, even in the case that we, because the impunity, we don't have exactly numbers uh, sometimes about what is the, the reality. But what we are looking right now, working with some uh, youths in the, in the more red areas, is that the youths in the theaters that they do or, or dynamics that they try to, to have um, uh, between them, 
they reproduce um, all this type of violence that they are living in their in their homes, and this is part of the whole. Uh, it's, it's, I don't know if in English you said the spiral, uh, violence spiral that is uh, going on. Exactly, it's like a cycle. Um, and then it's, it's, it's more general that uh, that just uh, to see this uh, this problematic that is against women just because um, the condition of um, uh, is related to the condition of gender. But the problem is that have different uh, perspective. One is the relations that. Uh, the, there are more women going into the youth camps. There are women that are going from their own towns, the, in, in the rural areas, uh, to the urban areas. And that sometimes there are women that are going in, trying to go to the US and going with these mafias that take, that take care of them. And also we have right now a grow of the, um, how do you say that? Traffic persons, but this traffic of women for sexual uh, um, uses. Then, uh, with all these uh, things, what you have is a lot of, of, of uh, implication of, of the or a, a growth in, in, in the numbers related with the um, the women that are killed. Uh, the the other uh, question that I also want to take in, in advance is related with the media. Um, because you talk more about the protections. We are right now working, but not related too much with the protection of the media in the case of um, Guatemala, Salvador, Honduras. It's a regional <coughs> program, but it's more linked in, in those countries that are in the North Triangle, that, is the, the, that have a more uh, bigger rates of, of homicides and uh, more strong problematic. But uh, the problem with the media is that right now, what we are trying is to make some type of um, awareness uh, with them in the way that they should um, manage the, the news. Because sometimes they use the news in a more um, you said yellow way. Um, because it's, um, you know, it's, it's, it's what sell more. And also they, they depend on the bigger um, private sector groups and then they are manipulated and, and used in, in different way. And this is why for us it's important right now all the new possibilities of, 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 um, of use of the media with the internet and with some type of uh, community uh, radios that are doing a very good uh, work and very good job, um, but that uh, unfortunately not always goes into the big population. And this is the people that sometimes it's important to have a more support in, the, in their defense because they are more exposure to this, uh, to this type of, of problems with uh, organized crime in, in the, the community. Thank you, Anna. Maurizio, would you like to say something? Yes, related to the question of the disappeared people, how many women, I don't know. Uh, the problem of, of the poor disappearance is that uh, Mexico, the state of Mexico, um, don't recognize it as a crime in all of the federal states. Only eight of the Mexican federal states has recognized it as a, as a crime in the law. And we don't have uh, institutions that are um, in, in the registration of the victims. So it's very difficult. We have uh, different NGOs uh, working in this registration. But in Mexico, as uh, in Guatemala also we have a very strong macho culture, so uh, we have a, a hate against uh, women uh, and also network in, in um, sexual uh, slavery uh, for, for women. Um, lots of them are migrants uh, trying to cross Mexico. So we are working in uh, rethinking masculinity, what it means to be a man in, in Mexico and um, we are trying to improve these kind of workshops with, with men and with colleagues uh, who are working in this uh, topic. Um, I um, don't think that it's going to be possible to dialogue with organized crime because um, there is not a, a homogeneous group. Um, there are a lot of uh, different kinds of, of um, orga organized crime. Types. We have seven big cartels in Mexico, um, 
I think six of them cartels uh, don't use uh, direct uh, violence. Only one of them, which is called the Zetas, uh, which is a, a, a part of the military elite group. They are uh, using extremely, uh, extremely violence. Um, but I think we can we can uh, work uh, with them in sense of uh, a, a justice channel, uh, in sense of control of um, the finance uh, channels. Just yesterday, uh, where three policemen killed at the uh, airport in Mexico City. Uh, involved in, in uh, drug trafficking and money laundering. Um, and there is a big uh, debate now in, in Mexico City. Um, but I think uh, the use of power, the use of force, uh, should have a frame of uh, very strong of, of human rights. Uh, because we are criminalizing all people, for example, the youth or uh, people with, lo with long hair or human rights defenders. Or, um, that's very difficult um, in the sense of um, going against organized crime uh, without a frame of human rights. The other question was uh, to have protocols uh, of protection for journalists. Yes, they are some of them, but we need more uh, support uh, in sense of um, um, financial support to approve more uh, psycho social accompany process to to the um, journalists and also to the defenders. Um, I am talking with the embassies, uh, even with the U.S. embassy, to have the possibility to um, get the people outside in 24 hours, uh, so they could be safety in another country. Um, most of the people who are reporting about organized crime, they don't put more the name in the articles. They just write uh, a collective of, uh, of press uh, media. And uh, one possibility for the civil society on abroad is to um, uh, make pressure to the Mexican authorities, uh, writing urgent actions or supporting the ones who are still who are already in circulation. That's the, the way we are working in, in Mexico. Thank you. Pacho, do you have something to add? Yes. Two points. Uh, what, what impressed me is the courage of women in Colombia in the struggle for peace. When the towns were terrorized and everybody was afraid of to stay there, men abandoned the towns, at least in the area where I was working, and women stayed. And because of that, it was possible to release the process with them. The problem with organized crime in a situation like ours, the problem really is the connection between the political class, the political people, the politicians, and the organized crime of the mafia. Forty members of the Colombian parliament went to prison because of that. But at the beginning of this week, the Congress of Colombia accepted a change in our constitutions in order to release all these people who were in prison. And finally, about the online peace communication and supporting people working for human rights. Unfortunately, my country, the online communication, which is very strong, is totally, is nearly totally controlled by the extreme right. For instance, if you make a statement in Colombia in asking for peace or human rights or the protection of land for the small farmers, immediately you get a hundred messages, very well organized by the people of the spring right opposing the statement. And uh, it's, it's, it's a good idea. We have to go through their strategy in order to invite people to join the online communication for peace and human rights.